Welcome to the 290 Mo Podcast. I appreciate your time. If you could, introduce yourself to my viewers and listeners. Hey, everybody. So, I'm Indica India. If you don't know me, you're going to know me very, very soon. Um, I'm actually a Chicago artist. I rap. Um, I also am working on producing my own beats now. So, watch out for that, too. But you guys can find me on all streaming platforms at INDICA, INDIA. And then on Instagram at INDICA underscore INDIA. For sure, for sure. That's dope. And we're going to get into all that. But I don't know how familiar you are with my work, but I like to get the full story in this little amount of time we got. So if you don't mind, where you from, where you grew up? So I'm from the north side of Chicago, northwest side of Chicago, the Old Town neighborhood. Okay. Um, so the gardens, Marshallfield Gardens. They be considering my neighborhood Northwest, I'm sure. Oh, no, I'm from that. Yeah, that's real Polo Northwest. G-say. Shout out to Polo, but the 1300 block, that's where I'm from. That's North North, I'm bro. I'm sure. That's what's up. So uh, talk about your experiences coming up up there, over there. Like, what was it like for you coming up in that area? Well, being born and raised um, over there, it has, like, to me, it was beautiful. It's just that I witnessed gentrification live. Like, we would have, like, at the corner of like before you even get to the block at the corner we had stop and shop and a curry exchange type shit and then they gentrified it where it's like one big shop now or it used to be horses all down my block like i literally horses know, i literally know how horse shit smells literally i could tell if his horse was nearby because i was actually raised right next to like the the carriages like the little castle mm-hmm. that they would be in and then it would be a whole little it's literally right like right across the street from me that's like, not, it'd be where they keep them downtown horses at mm-hmm. walking around well, downtown maybe now but at first we were we were it was right there i used to be able to help feed them sometime like during the summer or like during like the spring they would like kids clubs and Did stuff you, ride? you can yes i was able to ride one that's it was up. white one named rose i still remember to this day but it's gentrified now. Um, somebody like burned down the carriage a few years ago. Like I want to say ten years ago, probably a little bit later than that. Um, but since that happened, now it's a high rise. Mm-hmm. For sure. Damn. So let me ask you this about gentrification, because a lot of people got different opinions on it. Some people say it's good. Some people say it's bad. Some people say they kicking niggas out the hood. So from somebody who was boots on the ground, what was your experience like witnessing it firsthand? Well, when it's in it firsthand, it made me want to learn and want to invest in reverse gentrification because in reality, gentrification is appealing to the wealthy and I was surrounded by poverty ridden people. So, yes, they can gentrify and make things look beautiful, but also sometimes they would increase the rent. Yeah, you may get Section 8 or something or subsidized housing, but it's in certain spots they want to keep us in certain areas like box us in and then we surround it's like a reverse oreo literally like usually it's white on the inside chocolate on the outside no we the chocolate on the inside and then surrounded by us is usually white people and you know upper echelons so when i learned that i really wanted to that's why i'm you know in school for business because i wanted to learn like the logistics but also like my neighborhood like what's going on in my community because it's a beautiful place. It's right next to, it's so accessible to so much things. Like I'm next, like I used to be next to the zoo, the history museum, all of that. So you have access to a lot of stuff Mm. and the kids are, it's a blessing. The schools are good as well. But if you don't have the money for it at certain places where you can see the water, if you're not paying half a meal for a house or even more than half a meal for certain houses that I'm surrounded by, you're not gonna make it like you're not gonna be there but unless you got low income or you ain't got a job and you living off the government maybe you can in this little housing complex or a little further down or something like that so it it taught me a lot it definitely taught me to also bask in my blessings because it's a lot of people that live i mean i'm it's the hood yes but it's another hood that is not surrounded by nothing that i'm access to and yeah, I'm, sometimes we have to dodge bullets and stuff. It was just a shooting the other day. But it's not as worse as other neighborhoods. We actually are a really a, a blessing. Like, yeah, for sure. But it's definitely facts. a blessing. Facts, facts. That's dope. That's a dope story. So talking to me about your aspirations during that time, you know what I'm saying? You seeing all this, you feeding the horses. Did you want to be a jockey? Did you want to be a teacher, doctor, lawyer? Or was this always in you? Uh, when I was younger, I used to be a, I used to want to be an OBGYN, an obstetrician, gynecologist, but 
Like how oh, early? I can't do that blood stuff and the smells and all of that. Oh, bro, the smell. Man, the when smells they told me me, possibly sixteen years of school, and I was like, "Whoa, no!" Like, yeah, for uh, real. Possibly, it depends That's on crazy. you know what schools you go to, and then yes, it's a practice. Like you have to really right for sure. You really life. <clears> you gotta keep going to school, yeah. up here, bro. I just felt like no, I'm. I don't like being idle for long. Like the idle man is the devil's playground. So I love moving around. I love adventures. I love fun stuff. So. Um, ironically, I work with children, mm -hmm. so I miss India during the day and then Indica India at night. Mm -hmm. um, but that helps me as well because the kids are the future. And even though sure. I'm teaching them, I learn new stuff every day too. So I think that that's like the biggest blessing that I have access to that. And this, it helps me. Like I said, it goes back to gentrification because it can help with me. Like I kind of, when I make it in this music shit, I want to own a community center. Like I want to own one either in my neighborhood or just in the heart of my city regardless that has that I'm going to make sure that there's access for these children mm. or you know the youth in general it don't have to be just children it could be you know the I mean you technically are a teenager until you're 20 mm. when you're 19 you're still a teenager okay. so, so you're a legal adult yes but you're still a teenager so there's <clears throat> I want to still make sure that there's still access for the future because I'm only 25 and my frontal lobe just fully developed so it's a lot that I'm still learning myself, but I know that if someone else has that access to those blessings as well, like I want to be able to help them do that. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's dope. If you know, man, I want to know, you know what I'm saying? What was your, your, your household like, you know what I'm saying? Through this time, like, was it mom, dad, sister, okay. brother, you know what I'm saying? Was it? Um, <clears throat> I was raised by a single mother with four girls. It's all females in the house okay it was like bad girls club no i'm just kidding it actually was it still was a blessing my mom made sure that we were in and out so yes i'm i was raised where i was raised but we didn't parlay like we were really sheltered like mm -hmm. my mom taught us to go to school come in the house lock the door don't answer for nobody i got keys mm -hmm. unless i lose my key and i'll say it's me don't answer for nobody like we were really taught that and it did teach me to be extremely cautious in around where i am and also Luckily, she also gave me access to summer jobs, so I was able to go all around my city. Like, my grandma is um, from out west. My mom was born, I was born out west, actually, at Bethany Hospital. So, um, I was already, like, coming up north, yes, and I lived there all my life, born and raised, but I'll be out west at my grandma's house as well on Jackson and Pulaski, so. What? Yeah. My grandma has on Jackson Springfield, 3836. Yeah. Stop playing on, bro. That's what's up, man. I'm sure. Well, it used to be quite 20. But, yeah, so I was able to have, like, that access. I went to Circle Rock. Um, it used to be on Central Washington, but now it's called, like, Christ Chrysalis or something. I don't know. It's like that big catalyst catalyst. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I went there. Then I went to Walt Disney mm -hmm. uh, Magnet School, like, on Marine Drive up north. So the blessing was that my mom was educated. Um, she made sure that even with her children, she stayed educated. Ironically, she was 25. I'm 25. Um, no kids, though. What did she do? Uh, I'm sorry? What did she do? Um, she used to be a Head Start teacher at the at the YMCA, but now she's a supervisor. Them. Damn, Head Start. I ain't heard of Head Start in so long, bro. I was in Head Start. Yeah, sure. so she, she used to be on <laughs> Madison and... Uh, <laughs> I want to say Homan, but I don't think it's actually Homan. I forgot. Mm -hmm. But, like, right there, Garfield, YMCA, like, mm -hmm. right there. She used to be right there. Um, Not too far from Marshall. Mm -hmm. Marshall High School. Yeah. I think Marshall was in a boys and girls club somewhere. Bro. Mm -hmm. So, we used to always be out west in reality. That's really why I used to learn, like, the different streets and stuff and, like, just figuring it out. But I was, me being so sheltered, I learned, like, I used to go to North Lawndale for summer, or, like, for, like, the summer school. Not for summer school, but, like, summer camp. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, once I these niggas do that, crazy over here. <laughs> once I was able to like learn about it, I knew that I was like different, mm -hmm. and I knew I was sheltered because they used to call me white girl because the way I'm talking. Right. In reality, I'm just talking proper because right. I had the education just correctly. So, um, bro. <laughs> so my sister used to give me books instead of her saying "shut up." That didn't work. She just gave me books, but. She's 16, um, or she, she's um, six, six years older than me. So when I was 10, even when I was younger, when I was in kindergarten, I was already on a second grade reading level. Mm -hmm. She was giving me books I had no business reading. I'm talking about Sister Soldier, Zane, er, uh, Eric Jerome Dickey. Like, I had no business reading them goddamn books, okay? 
but it also taught me better. Like in my mind, I knew not to do that because I'm not old enough to do that freaky shit. But I knew about it. I do it. And it also helped me because I kind of learned the difference between lust and love when I got older. Mm-hmm. And also I'm the middle child. So you really got to find yourself more because I always wanted to just be like, hey, hey, see me. Hey, look what I'm doing. Like, you know, I want you to see me as well, not just them. But I was usually seen because I was needed. I'm the mediator type shit. So mm-hmm. I had to learn. Um, you got light up? I'm going to have to learn. Y'all ain't got no light. I ain't going to pass this cracky light on the camera, man. <laughs> the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bro. So, yeah, my mom, being a single mom, I didn't learn until I'm older now that there is no such thing as free time for real when you're a single parent. And when you a pay- parent, period, shit, oh, bro. Oh, well, yeah. Well, especially when you're in a black community, yeah, yes. But right. trust me, like, even when I was a nanny. No, for sure, my was a single parent. I know what you mean. They made time. Yeah, like, sure. the Caucasian families that I worked for, they made time for their kids. Because yeah. They luckily had the access and the money to do it. Mm-hmm. They had a whole nanny. Like, while I'm, while you helping her, me help me raise her or him, I'm going to work at home. I'm literally in the next room. That's another thing. They'd be in the next room. Our moms were gone. Mm-hmm. They had to work. For sure. And then it was time to sleep when they got back on, bro. Yeah, it's like, so I had to learn, like, why she's so tired or why sometimes she didn't have time for me because she's trying to she's not she's like an octopus she got to break down her time with not only herself and work with children imagine going to work with kids and then coming home to kids Mm-mm. yeah i couldn't do it um, bro i don't i don't, I don't do shit with other kids that ain't man um, bro even cool hey take your kids which when you leave them um, bro um, bro i'm not babysitting none of that yeah, sure I, it helped. I guess that's probably why i'm also a nurturer ironically my dad you know, he was a deadbeat. He's a rapper. Mm-hmm. So I'm a teacher like my mom used to be. And I'm a rapper like my dad is. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny how the universe works. That's it's kind of ironic. Mm-hmm. So your dad was a rapper. So he you say. Is. He probably spit a little one too if you give his ass an opportunity. Okay. Whatever. I'm not. So you say he was a rapper and he was a deadbeat. He's, he, he, he not a deadbeat no more? I mean, I'm grown. Okay. So, so I'm not gonna call nobody no deadbeat when I don't need you um for those things as a kid that you really needed. You know, I needed time mostly, but I'm learning at an age now that instead of harboring that trauma, I had to heal from that trauma. Mm. So it's kind of fucked up, but I, you know, with a lot of fathers, not even just black fathers, because it's when you when I be watching them little murder documentaries, some of them fathers that was white or Hispanic or who whatever. They were fucked up too. So I'm not going to talk about the absentee um, black fathers, but my black ass. Yeah, they killed their whole family for their girlfriend on bro. I'm sure. <laughs> for the money. For life. They said, listen, y'all said a milli. For, for all I got to do is they got to die. Like right now? Oh, shit. Fuck it. I'm sure. That's sick as hell. Then go to work like ain't shit happen. Like, <laughs> nigga go high speed or something. <laughs> <laughs> they go on a party. They go on smoke something. Oh, bro. And shit, what? Y'all crashed out. They be on news doing interviews. Like, I don't know what happened. If you see anything, let me know. <laughs> like, I don't know. But yeah, it's in a trunk. Oh, bro. In a fucking freezer. <laughs> what the hell? But with my father, he wasn't far at all. He was out west. He mm-hmm. wasn't far at all. You could have just took a bus or a train, to, you know, to just be in your kids' lives. For and- sure. Facts. Um, he wasn't there habitually. I won't say that I did not see my father, but mm-hmm. it, of course my mom had a, she could drop me off to him. Mm-hmm. He wasn't making an effort, so she's like, let me tell you something. You gonna watch her, okay? If, if she really needed him. Mm-hmm. And I feel like mama was extremely independent, so, um, and also she never was a bitter mom. Like, I never really heard bad about my father. I just saw for myself. Like, my mom still was the mother to call our, our fathers no matter what even if they i ain't seen them in, in, in a year two years months she would still call them for something whether it's for schooling if something going on in school if you know she may need them or i'm it's a, a holiday happening or if i'm hanging out with my father's side of the family you're gonna see her mm-hmm. or you know my other sister so you're gonna see them she always made that effort she was she's a very determined woman and that's the blessing about it and also with my dad, even though he was a deadbeat, when I was around him, I will say I learned from him. 
So that's how my pops was, bro. So he was is a black belt in karate. I see you every blue moon. Instead of you being like, hey, let's go out and get some ice cream. Let me see them kicks. What the fuck? I ain't even seen you. And the first thing you want to see is me kicking. Let me see your kicks. You've been doing your squats. You've been you've been stretching. Like, what the? You want me? Like, you been, you been doing it? I'll be like, what? But I realized the older I've gotten, especially when I saw him in person and, mm-hmm. and seeing him laugh while he did it, he was always on point, on go. He wasn't on point being a father, but he was on point. If somebody was on that with him, because he's he's short like me, that's where I get my my stature from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, it also made me hard body, and I have to I had to learn now, especially at twenty five, to let the hurt go because I used to be the person that would cry to a man about my dad when it should be the other way around, and so that's that's a lot of where the um, spitefulness or like the hurt can come from is because where were you, you know? Mm-hmm. As a kid, you were there because mom made a choice. But now, when you have the access and you have the choice, you're not making the effort. Or maybe when a lot of a lot of times now you older, you want to just talk. Like what the? No, not really. Yeah. Because like, old habits that hard. So my man, you probably are still the same. Yeah, that's crazy. I got a daughter. I should have break my heart. But I know from what my father put me through. Like as as a shorty, I just wanted kids. Cause like I never. Everything my father put me through up my kids, I never feel that ever. You know that's, what I'm saying? So that that fuels me to make sure they overstretch. I'm probably bug. I probably bug their ass. Like I don't care about being cool to nobody but them, on bro. I'm that's sure you have to because it actually it helps you too. Sometimes I, I I'm I'm noticing a lot of especially our generation of parents. You guys live. You know you 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 heal your trauma to your kids, and mm-hmm. and it's a it's a good way. It's not a bad way. It's like yeah, for sure. Shit, I didn't get this for Christmas. I'm gonna get this for you, oh, bro. You on sure you know, so what? Listen, I'm sure, I'm yeah. you so on sure. Let me tell you. Let me show you how it works. <laughs> you know, I, sure, I do with the kids at my job. Like it's like that. Like, but let me show you because you don't know about this. Let me show you how this shit works. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, they, and then they have been playing with it for hours or a few minutes or something. But it's it can help. Like it just shows. Sometimes all you need is love. It does not matter. And it's mm-hmm. real shit because. With babies, you that's what you always toys. need is love. Cause we all start off as babies, and we all need love, man. Still, you can yeah. give babies a million toys. They gonna pay for the damn cup. For sure, my son, number one, his ass gonna pay with everything that ain't a toy, on bro. Got every toy in the world. It is a toy. You can make anything a toy. <coughs> you can make a toy. It's for like you sure. can find some way to smoke out of something. Yeah, <laughs> literally. So. Sad note. First time I got high, I'm a '90s baby. First time I got high, on bro, I got. Had my homie mama used to smoke weed and he still had roaches and his his big brother made a oh, pipe yeah. out of aluminum foil. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Ooh, I know y'all chest. Well, I went home and ate like six glizzies. I went to sleep and I woke up and I thought it was the next day on bro. I'm sure. you six good, glizzies is crazy. <laughs> good for sure. Um, bro. So no, nah, that's dope, man. I appreciate you sharing that uh with us. But let's let's kind of tiptoe into the music a little bit. So mm-hmm. let me ask you this. You know what I'm saying? Music plays a big part in in a lot of our lives. Um, where what was being played in in your household? Like, what was OG listening to? What was y'all listening to on Saturday mornings, cleaning up? And then it's four women, so I'm knowing it ain't just all R and B, sad. You know? What I'm no, saying? but in a way, yes. And then y'all a year, he yeah. says big sis was six years apart. So yeah, you know. we were just we were six years up. It's it's funny how it works because Mama ended up having a baby ten years after. Like she was just doing shit. Cause like you're 35. Like wow, what the fuck? What you you had three already? Ten years later, she like you know what? Fuck it. That's what it gave. It gave that. But that was the biggest gift. Shout out to my mama. Because the biggest gift you gave me besides my life, of course, is my baby sister. All my sisters, yes. But that baby, my, even though she's not a baby, she's 15 and taller than me. But that's still my baby. I don't care. My mother played R. Kelly. Okay? I'm not saying free him. All I'm saying is he could drop a few more songs. I'm just saying. I'm not saying free him. I know what he did. Oh, that's the first of You said a few more songs. You know, people always be like, yeah, play that shit. But you say a few more. Okay. I mean, I'm sure. I'm, okay, I, okay, I am saying that. But then he did drop a song in jail. Was that real? The one he made? Like when he said he ain't do it, that was out for like 16 hours or some shit? I don't know. I'm, sure. I'm just saying. So my mom, my mom name is Sonya. But we used to sing that song, Tonya Twing. You say, Sonya, 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 Tonya, Tonya, Tonya. I swear to Damn. God. Damn, bro, you, you make me want to hit that shit like, on, bro. Man. Okay, I'm telling y'all. She used to that's clap on, um, bro. They used to be doing dancing that in the boys and girls club and shit, bro. That shit. 
that song R. Kelly. Yeah, I play that shit on the speakers, boy. That shit gonna clap, boy. They don't know. I never met him. I think that he saw her probably in passing or something, and he was just like Sonya. And then he was like Sonya, Sonya, Sonya. I'm telling y'all, Sonya, 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 Sonya. Think about it. I'm sorry. All right. Hear it. I hope. No, not as R. Kelly though. It was a vast, like it was always. Oh, that's why I, sometimes I understand. I like the generation that we're talking about, mm-hmm. hood rat shit, because she was listening to Trina and Trick Daddy. She was listening to the Ghetto Boys. She was listening. Well, not all the time though, but she was listening to the Ghetto Boys. She was to a lot of R and B, like Jer. Uh, no, Jaheem. I'm sorry, I'm about to say Jeremiah. Sometimes Jeremiah. She had birthday sex in the chokehold. Okay, but WGCI was like the main thing as well. Mm-hmm. And also my dad, even though. We didn't see Mary Blue Moon. When we did, He used, we had all the new albums because he used to burn the CDs. So any movies or albums that were out, Same here. he would we burn. Yeah, all the bootlegs. So movies, like going to the movie theater was like a special occasion because we didn't really need to. For sure. Luckily, um, bro. We were blessed. Um, bro. And mama had, she her childhood, I feel like. I never went to a family place. movie theater like as a family. I started going to the movies like. Like with my oh, friends and shit. Back in the day, you used to really be able to sneak to the to the theaters. My uncle used to what? Go to a movie and watch two other movies and early, shit. Bro, <laughs> go up in this one and we going in this one. Now you going to jail? Yeah. <laughs> Got your ass on six cameras. Come here, come here. Yeah. So my my mom, well, luckily my dad, um, blessed us with like even though he wasn't there when he was, he always had them CDs. He had all the new albums, even some of the unreleased. Yeah. So back then they. You could find unreleased. Yeah. He had unreleased albums. So we used to really have like all the Chris, like when our generation, we had all the Chris Brown yeah. albums. We had all the Malice Behavior. We had like a lot of different um, albums ourselves. But my mom was able to have actual albums and then we had actual movies. So like the access to all them old school songs, but also the hood songs. I was a YouTube kid. So growing up during that era, I was going through the YouTube spiral though. So you know what that means? I go through it to this day. I do. I probably That's go through it tonight it. when everybody going on, bro. Hey, I go and, and some shorts. I, you know. Literally, sometimes at a, like you, my goal is search up one thing, and then I and I come now to to some animals, and then maybe it's some music, and I'm like, what the? This is kind of nice, mm-hmm. you know. What really helped me with my versatility also was. I was a weird kid. Mm. And weird is a good thing. I always teach my little sister, if someone ever calls you weird, say thank you, because that means you're one of a kind. You're not like these lame-ass motherfuckers, you know? Mm. But I was versatile. So one minute, so I never had my music on shuffle. One minute, I'm going to have my hood music, I'm going to have my slow jams, and then next, you may hear some, bury me, bury me. You know, it's, it's going to get a little raw. You know, you can't. I can't have it on shuffle. I may scare you, you know? But and it was like that back then. I had access to... YouTube, so I was looking up like some little heavy metal and stuff like that, electronic core, and then I'm also a nerd, a fanatic, so I would look up, like actually go out of YouTube and search up stuff, mm-hmm. and I found our feature. So I was our feature crazy, like I used to not only like um, Tyler the Creator, I would listen to Haji Beats, I would listen to Left Brain, like I would listen to a lot of them. And they're, when they also used to collab, because they also had their own little different names, it would be so cool because there's so many of them. But when I tried to figure out what genre, they kind of called him Horrorcore. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is Horrorcore? Because I'm like, you know, we got that vibe from. Like, I mean, in a way, yes, it is dark. Like, what the hell? But I didn't know of like, right, for sure. putting a name on it. Yeah, I'm young. I'm bro. really in high school. Like, this is like the early high school. So I'm like, 13, 14. And that's the first time I heard it, but I just know now that I talk to so many artists. It's a million on one genre. Mm-hmm. It is, because there's so many of them. It's so versatile. Mm-hmm. And then it's a, that's amazing how versatility works. We black. We can do anything. Yeah, for sure. Literally. Um, And that's the start. We're the start of a lot of shit, so let's clock that. But um, Definitely with start. that, I looked it up, Horrorcore. So I searched it up, you know, leave YouTube, go to Google or Bing, and look it up, and I found Ghetto Boys. I found Immortal Technique. I don't I know who that is. Oh, do you know MF Doom? Nah. I know Ghetto know Boys, MF though. Doom? Nah, MF Doom? Oh, the one that used to wear, like, the mask? Like, so. Well, he, who he used to be with? He, he was well, he was underground, like, New York, but he was with, like, a nah. lot of artists. You see, I was, like, a New York hater coming up. Like, I ain't really, like. You know what I'm saying? Like when people was, like JV was, was raw. Arguing on, arguing on Facebook. Lil Wayne was the New York versus Chicago. Yeah, I didn't do the argument part, but I was just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
<clears throat> Wayne heavy and down south trap, and then yeah, was Drew I, came I'm and a little Wayne fanatic, okay. But now that I'm older, yeah. I'm starting. I'm to not just that a Carter music. three fan. I am. Not, I am not a human being two fan. Okay. What? I. I'm not a Carter three. About it. Shout out Soldier Boy. Even though that okay, Soulja if y'all was a legend, bro. What you say Soldier Boy is a legend. I just feel like the song Trigger Finger was so fucking hard. But if you heard Soldier Boy's verse. It gave shit. He done snapped on all these beats. Let me just put him on there. Did you hear his verse? No. Nah. Okay. Hopefully no no copyright. But he was like, rest in peace to the game because I'm fresh to death. Rest in peace to the game. Tell him kill himself. Make a death wish because I'm too fresh. Because I'm fresh to death. Because I'm fresh to death. You go broke trying to get fresh like this. Rest in peace to the gang, cause I killed it. I'm fresh to death. I'm fresh to death. What you talking? I came out of coffin. Yeah. That was it. I was like, what the fuck? All right. And then Lil Wayne was like, I just can't see myself living in the house of mirrors. Like he was just, he was just like, look, let him, let him cook. Cause he done cooked these beats. So let him cook. But it was just like, he didn't need him on there. Cause Lil Wayne is a lyricist. Him and Immortal Technique were the ones that inspired me. Yeah, I'm about to check out Immortal Technique. You make me want to see Yes, to listen to You Never Know and Dancing with the Devil. Mm -hmm. So before I started rapping on a beat, I was doing spoken word. Mm -hmm. My name was always Indica India, though. Like, I didn't pick my name, though. Someone gave me that name. So Ironically. that was definitely one of my questions. But since you walked us into that, you know what I'm saying? I was definitely one expecting that, that somebody gave that to you. Yeah. So I'm... I'm assuming it wasn't given like a birth name. So no, my name is really India. My mom gave me that name. She saw a black violinist in Jet magazine, and she thought it was a beautiful name, so she gave me India as my name. So, is that what you mean by given, or do you mean like no? So I mean technically given, but like the, 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 the name of Indica India. Okay. Like I didn't think of that. So let's talk about name. that story. Like how did that? How did that happen? So I was always doing poems before I rapped on a beat. What kind of poems? Because we know you got Spoken the same words. history. Well, yeah, no, no, I know you got. Like I was, I was still young. I knew better. Like because I still wanted. I oh, was, this was early. Yeah. Okay. Like in high school, like I was a junior in high school when That's I got gross. the name, but I was just India shit. Like, but I was always just writing. Like I just, it's just in me. Like my dad used to be rapping, so I used to try to do it too as a mm -hmm. kid. So naturally, I always was saying. I always you give. It's so funny sometimes when some people be saying something. I can have a phrase from a song for you. Like you could be saying something, and I can remix it. It's so funny. You be like, how did you? Do? I don't know. It's the coolest thing ever. But still to this day, I can do it. But um, um, I was junior high school, mm -hmm. and back then only seniors can go to off campus lunch. But we didn't give a fuck. Okay, we finna pop out. Okay, we finna get high. We gonna smoke our blunts. We gonna go to the stores if we got time and still make it back for your next period. Mm -hmm. Um, I met an under. It was a group of us, and I met an underclassman named Zay. Shout out Zay. Um, and he first of all he was ditching his damn self. He had no business even being. He he didn't even have our lunch period. That's what I said. Cause high school was lit. Cause my high school was shit. You can walk out any of these doors whenever you want to. Ain't nobody yeah. gonna stop you, they, bro. They may you if they sure. don't fuck with you, they may. But if you bro. locked in with them security guards, we was locked in. Luckily, and I had my older sister had went there too. So luckily, like that's what surprised was, me about high school. Yeah. Like the football season, I was like, I could just leave. Ain't nobody gonna stop me. What? You on the football team? Hell yeah. That's really why you had motion. For sure. Okay, sure. hey, my little ass. Best time of my life. Caught, you know? But also I had motion where I was I was knowing them. I'm like a look like a daughter to them. So right. it was like, all right, go. And yeah, you stand out, you little young girl walking around short walking. Oh no, 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 no. I don't stand out because I'm with the crew. Like I was really like in my mind, but I learned because that's what that's also what taught me in high school the difference between lust and love. Because I'm thinking that these my homies and sometimes some of the people that you thought was one of your, one of the guys had a crush on you on the low. And you're like, what the oh, fuck? Oh yeah, oh, every time. Dang. What are you doing? You know, I didn't, I didn't, yeah. Y'all can't you know. blame people for that, man. No, you, can, you can blame them when they lie on you. Like, hey, I hit that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but that's it, weird but shit. But when you look bro. back, it kind of, of course it sounds believable because I'm leaving out with y'all. Right, like, for sure. Yeah, for just, sure. That's weird shit. But I didn't think that it made sense. Like, why right. you lying? You know, right. I don't know. Everybody different? No, that's no shit. That's no shit. But also, um, we had no business being outside. Like, we supposed to have been in, in eating lunch the for right sure. way. No, yeah. we outside. But we ended up finding, like, these different cuts and stuff to smoke in. And 
Zay was actually We used to smoke in people's hallways on We were literally in somebody's back patio Like their porch thing We hop, we would hop over it Because they got a big ass steel door We would hop over the steel door And go up the, all them stairs So we didn't go up, up the stairs We'd just be on like the, the second flight mm. And we all It would be a lot of us We'd all be smoking back then Them Trey Fives used to last for days Nowadays Bro Blowing them a day. Trey, what a day on oh, sure. More than this. That's why if, if you buy yourself. Oh, no, sure. I'm myself. I'm talking. I'm talking about myself. Oh, I'm come back faster, but I still be mm-hmm. like, God damn. So at I least a zip up. a week on bro. I roll up one for the before I even smoke the one off in the phone. Like you gotta have two. Yeah, you gotta be you gotta ready. Get have before you get have, you know bro. I'm sure. You gotta stay ready. But um, we were end. We end up smoking. Now when I end up meeting him, he actually. Was growing weed. His mom knew about it and everything. Mm-hmm. He's younger than me. I'm cool ass mom. He was still sixteen. He like fifteen, I think, or fourteen. I don't know. He was definitely a sophomore for sure, and I'm a junior. And we all smoking and stuff. He rolled up, and I kid you not, I didn't know what Fontos were back then. I still don't know. We what had Vegas and shit back then. We were smoking the Vegas. We were smoking. Oh, okay. White out. I'm just in a bag and shit. This yeah, big ass, big ass, ass and shit. Bags. Yeah, uh, my homie, I can't do that shit, bro. That's already that's too much work, bro. We were in New York, and them things were the size of my like literally like this long for two dollars. That's, that's too much work, man. Bro. Fantastic, give me fourteen of them. I'll be buying pre rolls from the dispensary sometimes, man. I'm sure. I'm, yeah, you bro. got to. But um, so he rolled up. He rolled up, and I kid you not, still to this day, he could say himself. This nigga rolled up a seven in a whole fonto. Just because, mm-hmm. just because. I back then we over here rolling up our little saw bucks, dubs, and making that shit work. He just it's nothing. When I told him my name, I remember verbatim. He hit the wood and he said, "India, Indica, India." And I was like, "Shit, that's raw. Hold on, I, I'm, I like that. Like that was raw, and I stuck with that. Like." That was it. I used to call it my stage name when I finally performed in front of people for poetry. I would literally, my name is Indica India. That's my name. Mm-hmm. Even though it's telling, now mama really know, even though she knew I was smoking. But now you really know I'm getting like, what the fuck? Why would that be? No, they definitely know. Look they definitely know. Like, it's cool, India. You sure. know, Indica. Like, that's cool. That was just so dope to me. So I'm like, fuck it. I'll, that'll be my name. And um, I performed in front of Chance the Rapper a few times for his um his little open mics that he would do mm-hmm. at the library, and then Victory Gardens. Shout out Mikey. Um, the whole really the whole drama club of my school they would they had access to the theater like not too far from the house from the school, mm-hmm. and we could perform there all the time. So that's when I started just doing poetry. But when I heard Immortal Technique, even though I was always listening to Lil Wayne and Chief Keith. When I heard a mole technique make a six and a half minute song and tell a story, it was dark though. Don't get it was horrorcore. It was really dark. I thought it was a true story. It wasn't. It was you just made it up. Um, it's called Dancing with the Devil. I'm a lyricist, so I listen. I don't just care about no catchy beat. Like I, I want you to make it sound cool, but I can you really rap? Are you really a rapper? Are you just an artist? You know, because you could be just if you really rap and you are a lyricist, you should be able to spit some bars. What's but, up? Facts can't and, and you just making like a one minute or whatever then i mean it may be catchy because the beat catchy so she may throw your ass to it or nod your head but i love real lyricists like lil wayne is to me a real that's a real lyricist so he's the goat lil wayne the goat um and so when i heard a more technique do dancing with the devil that was a challenge for me that's when i started to do spoken words and i wrote a letter to my father and it's like one of my like yeah, everybody love that's like their favorite spoken word. Did but, you actually read it to him? Yes, I ended up reading it to him because at first I wasn't trying to. I read it to my mother, and she called him and cursed him out. He called me, and at first I was kind of like, "No, I'm not gonna do. It. I'm not gonna do it." But then he started making up excuses. You're not really apologetic. You're just trying to play victim. So yeah, you can hear it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell it to you. And his response was, "Damn." You are very raw and amazing. And I'm sorry. And your response? Well, my last my last words on the poem is, I forgive you. Those are my last words in the poem. So, like the entire poem is beautiful. It was a it was a challenge for me. Like I had to really do it. But it was amazing. And it ended with, you know, I just want to say, I forgive you. Mm-hmm. 
because I don't want to harbor that. I'm I'm only five feet. Who want to harbor all of that? I got I'm I have a future to live for. Like I don't want to be stuck. Sometimes, no matter the age, age literally is nothing but a number. But sometimes you can be stuck where your trauma was. Sometimes if you went into some sick stuff at fifteen, yeah, all the time. I went through something at fifteen. Sometimes you can still be a little boy, a little girl that was fifteen. You still have shit in the back of your subconscious mm-hmm. that you think you got over, but and it's really not scared of the dark. You wonder why you can't turn the lights off. You know what I'm saying? So. Yes, because I know what happened. That like I can't, you know, I'm still learning how to swim, but I almost drowned at the Kalahari <laughs> as a kid, and that's why I feel like I can't float. Cause I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. You sound like my daughter, on, bro. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Like this, listen. I be barely, I barely. Want All you gotta do is lay back. I bet. Mm. Yeah, Just did that, <laughs> did that. Ugh. Ain't no way, my little ass. I'm, and then I googled it, y'all. I googled it. Not you googled it. Oh, it does not matter how small you are. What I'm you doing wrong? Sink, you actually can sink more because you're smaller. The bigger you are, Man, what? you're more likely to float. Blue me. I well, that makes sense, duh. The boy and right. you know, like the blubber and stuff. It's not really blubber. I know about the blubber. I know no, no, no. Hey, I'm not shaming. It's not no blubber. Just track no fat people. No, no, I'm talking, I'm talking about seals and walrus <laughs> and stuff like that. They have blubber that <laughs> helps them float. It, that really does. It also is fat that helps them that they store and keeps them warm and you know feeds them as well. But it helps them float because they weigh thousands of pounds, hundreds of pounds. Okay, they should be sinking because really the water is you know bigger. But no, it's not like that. Mm-hmm. I learned that, and that gives you more anxiety. It's like, oh shit, like, mm-hmm. yeah. So when I be on the yachts and stuff, I got my life vest. Not you got your life vest on the yacht. I ain't even had ready. life vest on the yacht, oh, like, bro. Gotta be ready. Stay ready. You ain't gotta get ready. Stay ready. Yeah, for sure. Anything so it can happen. For sure. For sure. So so before I get you out of here, I got a few more. Um, what talk? Let's talk about the transition from from spoken word to to a uh, actual recording artist like do you remember that instance yes. was it seamless was it a a big transition was it in a way it was seamless but at first i wasn't i was just writing um i was actually dating um a producer and artist as well um when i was younger so my first time really rapping on a beat and recording it was in 2019 mm. um it was like I was always in the studio with him. I would write all the time, but I would just use those as like spoken words because in my mind, I'm writing a full sentence anyway. So it's like, and also the, the transition of music with poetry was really hard for me because I would view my bars as stanzas. Mm-hmm. So with stanzas, it's each line. So in my mind, I'm thinking every line is a bar when it's really every two lines. Like, Right, that's what I was because I was gonna say, can't you just call out a bar, <laughs> bro? But it's not. Yeah, Sometimes you for can sure. Like saying something deep, and then it's just one line. That ain't really no. That's not the whole bar. You still like I used to write lines after line. Like yeah, I got like sixty bars. Like well, no, you, bro. you got you know you don't, girl. That's about thirty. You need two more. You trying to thirty two bars? What? Gee, look at how much I wrote. It's like yeah, but it's not poetry. Like three hundred bars. Rap it right now. And I'm like, oh, okay. It, you right. You right. Mm-hmm. So I had to learn that difference too. But in 2019, I was with a group of girls. I thought with my friends. We had disagreement, even though they really weren't my friends. I was. It was a lot of girls. Too many of them. Too many females. Okay. And they. I know was your friends. I, the too I many. Mean, no, no, no. The main one is still my friend to this day. Okay, so, so it had to I'm be just one. saying. That's the thing, though. We wasn't really in their group. Mm-hmm. Her and I weren't even in their group for real. Mm-hmm. Like that's the thing. We just got added type thing. Like we were just hanging out with them. But still to this day, shout out Ace Dog. Um, but she's still my friend. We've been friends through thick and thin. Cause I know I'm a bug, okay? <laughs> but that's my Scorpio girl. That's my that's she we've been locked in for years. But we got to have disagreement. I had already had a Tupac remix written. Hit him up? Yes. Damn. <laughs> Hit him up. I had it written. Ironically, it kind of did describe what was going on. It's so funny. And it was my ex is in our anniversary and he said i always make songs about you do this for me and i was like uh-oh okay fine and i still remember it i was like first stop your mama's a bitch and your niggas lame you always sucking dick and you're playing games you claim to be about it but when I come outside i got three bitches that are down the ride and i got five niggas that are down the road waiting on the sidelines to update pro i was just doing too much you know what i'm saying yeah you meant that shit yeah somebody. but ironically I had it already written. It wasn't about nobody. I just, you know, it was a hit them up. Like, I never did a tight beat or a challenge type of thing. So I just thought, let me do it. 
Um, and then I recorded it, and that was my first one I ever did. Oh my god, my voice all the way up here. It was like Mickey Mouse or Minnie. It mm-hmm. was, but then after that, I just kept going. Like I would find beats. Um, I was dating producer at the time, so he would have beats for me. He found like he helped me find my sound a lot because. I'm more of a just, I want to just rap. I feel like Ebony Pass Club. I just want to rap for y'all. That's it. But with rapping, you got to do your ad-libs. You got to do your ins and outs. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, even though it's hard bars, what makes the songs be like the ad-lib sometimes. Or that hard beat. That weird little catchy thing that you was like, suck my dick. Let's go. Like, shit like that. Like, you, if you do those things, like, it can add on to something and really turn it up. Yeah, and you, I feel like you got to do those things. I work with so many artists and they just verse chorus i'm like bro say other shit i'll be trying to right. play other and people's I have, songs i'd be yeah. like you hit them in the background like just i'm like bro, just talk on bro yeah, so for me like, I, little shit like that i have yeah. my hiccups don't get me wrong because sometimes i just want to just spit my bars mm-hmm. like i think it's dope because it's freestyle sometimes when i'm just doing like a one take right. i'm so feeling like juice world like, got those sometimes i, I love that because juice world when he did his freestyles he didn't even though in a way he did mess up he did not and he would laugh at it mm-hmm. because he was so dope because it's coming it's off the dome like it was just the dopest it was the dopest thing so every time i ever did a freestyle that i was because i usually i write i write all my songs but when i freestyle i love it because the fact that i can do it without being like blah, blah, or like stuttering or anything it's like damn girl just keep punching in like you can do it mm-hmm. but sometimes for me time is money so i'll be wanting to come in there prepared or coming up with something written already and just trying to find my sound. Or, hey, you got to be for me today? All right, let's go. Because I know I can write it and get it done without me overthinking. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes for me, every line has to rhyme. Mm-hmm. That's still the poet in me. Every line has to rhyme. That. I fuck with that because a lot of artists. Literally, as you can see what I just said. A lot of artists getting away from that, one, bro. Yeah, and no, for me, I and I'm, I'm still working on a little catchy stuff. But it could be catchy and still rhyme and make sense. Because I feel like that's how you rap. That's how lyricism works. Like, you should be able to spit some bars and that shit go. Like, yeah, but then go to that shit. He can make any word rhyme for somehow. I don't know how the fuck he do that shit. But any word rhyme and anything makes sense. Yeah, I sense thought I couldn't um, rhyme orange, but porridge. Yeah, I'm sure. He can... It's just the way you say it. <clears throat> orange. Ooh. You know, it's just the way you say it. Like, it's the way how you say it. Let me let me ask you about your creative process because you you mentioned that you write everything you know what I'm saying so what's it like when you go to the studio is everything is it no you know what I'm saying no edits you know what I'm saying is it one take Drake since you got everything written down do you write in the studio like what's it like you know what I'm saying putting it together all of the above literally it just depends on like for me I love authenticity so I always try to come well for one I'm gonna roll up I'm have my woods ready. I'm going to try to calm myself down because sometimes I get really excited and I'm in that mug moving, you know, like it obviously I know nobody's looking, but it can kind of affect like, girl, be still. Mm-hmm. But I be so lit and excited to like, I love music. I, it's my therapy. It's so fun. But for me, I like writing. So I'll be in the house, got my TV on full blast, playing the beats, writing, writing. If I'm not done by the time I already booked the session. I'm gonna just finish it. At the Pen and paper, right? You writing your phone? Or? Um, I used to, so I still got my, I still have my actual book that I did my poems in and my rhymes. But now, no, I do it on my phone. Mm. But sometimes I do, sometimes I do still bring it and I write something new in it just to have it. But I usually, yeah, I usually just write it in my phone or I punch in because sometimes I don't want to look at my phone. Like if I'm saying something fast, because I talk fast. I'll try to figure out a way to switch it up. So that's why that's when the edits come in. Yes, I have something written already. Maybe if I come in or maybe I'm, it's not even done. But then um, I may need to actually like slow it down or. OK, hold on. I, I hear it on, on the I hear it on the beat right here. Mm-hmm. So I may need to say it slower. Or oh, hold on. Let me switch this flow up like things like that. So that's what authenticity comes into play, because then it's like. I also ask my producer. It's all about trusting who you work with as well. Like, how that sound? Let me hear it back. Like, I'm, I love my voice, so I usually try to hear it live. I don't like just sound like this. Like, I You're right, right. Voice, right. But not right you now. Know, I talk I, to I a lot of artists who say they don't like hearing their voice. I like, love my a voice. A lot of artists like it is so headphones sexy. never it's option. So right. Like when you said, like I just want to hear my voice on it. I've never. That's the I first time. The motherfuckers over there collecting dust on bro. I'm sure. I love my voice. Um, bro, I'm typing. I'm like, yeah, let me get the headphones on, bro. I'm sure. 
But no, nah, that's dope. That's dope. So you mentioned, you know what I'm saying, the connection with the engineer. So I want to ask you, like, do you work with the same engineer? Do you have um, a, a, <clears throat> a certain group of engineers that you work with? Do you record yourself? I know we kind of talked to uh, you kind of met through them about getting into making beats. So mm -hmm. what's it like at the actual production level uh, of the music part? So, um, at first I did not have a habitual, um, stool man. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I was bouncing around from one stool to the next because I didn't have like that. Like I said, my ex was my mm -hmm. producer, so I had it, but that was years ago. Mm -hmm. So once, like, it's been like almost three years now. So with that, I knew to find, you know, I need to lock in with somebody. I need my own actual studio besides me just doing it myself. Um, and just trying to like record myself I needed somebody to help me Because I didn't know how to just fully do it I used to just learn how to When I was in the studio with him Press the space bar And then press it again Like if I record myself Press it again All right. Nope go back Press you know Or you know drop down Or something like that Now I actually do my own Like two of my songs on my album That I just did I finished my own mixes at the end Because I needed it cut off a certain way and I did it on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I, so now my set mixes that I did at the shows, yeah. I do it myself. Like, I just, and it'd be hard, but to zoom in and, like, edit it and cut it. Uh -huh. You ain't got to tell me. I'm sure I'll be up here at YouTube University. Like, but, sure. Shout out DJ Fame and shout out Marco. Damn, because, shout out DJ Fame, on bro. He yeah. slid through here, on bro. So with those two right now, I've been locked in with um, DJ Fame is really the producer. Mm -hmm. um, they both make some dope. Uh, Y'all need to lock in with them, like I said, because they are dope ass artists themselves as well. Um, I do, I have done a song with um, Fame before. What the hell? That's that shit, and that's what helped me. He helped me come out of my shell because I'm a rapper. I don't like singing or none of that. I be just wanting to rap and be hard. Uh, I want my voice to get like this and get real serious, like stuff like that. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. But to harmonize i don't be like you doing it but he helped me he pushed me to actually be like come on bro right because you know you can you can write fast so just you know write it when i heard the beat i was like all right fine and it's not singing anyway it's just harmonizing like i'm not over here like aretha franklin like i'm over here just i'm doing what a lot of rappers do mm -hmm. which is just talk in a way but it's like a little harmonizing that's it mm -hmm. <laughs> just something simple and it it goes because a lot of like shout out star bands like she was doing it like a lot of artists do it because i'm not trying to sing i'm just trying to rap but sometimes that little fa -la, la la it goes a long way um with the music but in the lab that's what helps as well like lately sometimes i come with a beat um i'll have a pack of beats that i'll come with or um i used to sometimes i do the youtube but lately i've been having artists um or producers that send me beats as well but Fame and Marco have been snapping in the studio. So sometimes I'd be like, I right, play a beat. Mm -hmm. So I can try to, you know, catch on. If we do group um, studio sessions, sometimes it's like first come, first serve, which is the best thing as well because it helps. It teaches you, like, hold on. If you want that beat, get it. Especially when, you know, you're working with other, like, male artists. That's the biggest thing, too. Because then sometimes they'll overtake it and be like, all right, I want one. And they're like, no, 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 hold on, hold on. I like this beat too. Let me get it first. Let me get it. You know, and, and, and it helps because once you like actually figure out um, your sound as well and your versatility and what you fuck with, because usually for me, if the beat is hard, I want to hop on it. That's just me. I'm not looking for a tight beat. I'm not looking for a, a specific genre or I don't want to care about slow or fast. If it's hard, I want to hop on it. Mm -hmm. That's just how I am. <clears throat> and, and still talking about your creative process and, and talking about that still a little bit more. When you creating songs, are you like, I need one for the radio. I need one for, for my girls. I need one for them late short night drafts. Or is it just always a vibe every time you, you go to the studio? The main thing is a vibe, but those, yes. Like when I did the come on, arch your back and move your hips and dip it low and spread it wide. It was random. I don't be doing no twerking stuff. Like I be, I, I do twerk, but I'm saying like, I don't make, those, <laughs> you know, so I usually, I let the other ladies do it. I don't do it. But when I heard that beat, I said, Oh shit, I gotta do it. I gotta do the beat. I gotta do the song. And I also did another song with Ace dog and her and I, I woke up and went to studio and I was like, I want to do a twerk song. And it don't even sound like me. That's the universe speaking then. Do it. 
Mm-hmm. It's a challenge. I love challenges. I love adventure. I do things that I'm afraid of. Like snakes, I'm scared of snakes, but I will hold one. Mm-hmm. I literally ask. Like when I see snakes, I'm like, can I hold it? And I'm scared that a motherfucker don't put it around my neck. That's just this a constrictor. Uh-uh. The no. only reason I ain't got no snake up in here is because you got feet that don't fuck with rats, bro. And I do not fuck with rats. Yes, that's another thing. Mm. Sure they sound like really cool pets, but I don't want to feed no dead animals. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to. I said I wanted a rabbit, but that's a lot of shit. I'm just gonna look in that look. Yeah, that's a lot of shit on bro. Go puffs all around my house. I don't think I want that life. Oh, bro. A goat? I know I'm a goat, but a goat? That's more coconut mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-mm. And they eat everything. Like a lizard or something, bro. I said I want me a dog. Yeah. The a cane courser or a German Shepherd. What? Definitely gotta get the cane courser. But that's a lot of with, with these dogs. You, you gonna, gonna be able to ride that motherfucker on, bro? Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> come on, let's go. <laughs> oh, anyway. sure. mm-hmm. No, that's what's up. That's what's Walk up. Me, I'm gonna be on the back though. I'm gonna be on the back mm-hmm. for sure, for sure. So, when 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 you start to actually doing the music yourself and and knowing that you want to be an artist, once you got that down packed, what's the goal at this point? You know what I'm saying? Are you doing it just for sport? Do you doing it because you know what I'm saying that was the the natural evolution from spoken word? Do you? You want to get sand? Like, what's the goal now? Now that you putting shit on wax, you know what I'm saying? And you really doing this. What's the goal? What's the so, plan? It sounds fun to be signed, but I like to move when I want to move. And I I like to make my own. Like, if the universe blesses me with the opportunity of being signed, I'm going to make sure that it's the one for me. So that I know I'm not just working for somebody. Because mm-hmm. in reality, I'm not just a cash cow. Like, I'm more than just that because a lot of times that's what labels are looking for they're looking for the next come up that's it in reality they're going to use the word next artist of course the next star right but with that word star is a broad statement because in reality you're looking for the next come up the next cash cow that can add the money to y'all labels you know what i'm saying and i don't want them to just view me as that because i am human i have my days where sometimes i get overstimulated because i literally am overthinking my music mm-hmm. That's how serious I am about what I do. I do want to make it in the music industry, but I do pray that not too deep in there. I do want the world to know my name, yes. But I don't care about being famous. I don't care about being famous. I just need y'all to hear this shit. Mm-hmm. And it's going to pay some bills. And and it's going to take me places that I know I really want to go because I do want to do acting. I want to do voice acting. I want to do animated. You're going to hear me. Literally, I have accents. I have funny voices. You're, yes, I'm manifesting. We, that's something we working on. That's we what I'm working on. Cartoon shit over no, there. Like no, shade, no shade to Caribou, but I did see an interview of her saying like the reason why she did it. She did it because Yadi did it, and also because she wanted to be an actress. So she thought, she if I do this music, shit, he could do it. I could do it, so that I could be on the movie. No, that's not my goal. You see how hard I come. I really rap. I'm really doing it. Nobody. That's all I'm saying. Say. I don't even know she a real rapper, on, bro. Well, that's what she said in the interview. Like she, her story was. I'm not gonna speak for her, but if you watch it verbatim, she saw her manager. Right. I mean, her. Um, she was his assistant. Um, she saw him do it. He was on how high. She thought, shit, if I can make a you know a little hit, right. I can get on a movie. That's her goal. My goal is to make it in this music. And I also want to do I want to do those as well. Like I want to do movies and stuff. But I, if I want to be an actress, if that was my main goal, I know what I need to do. Mm-hmm. I could be doing headshots, portfolios, going out there, doing the audition and stuff like that. But I know where my lane is right now, and that's music. Mm-hmm. And it forever is. I wake up, I sleep, I breathe it. I it's always a beat in my head. I'm always sitting there trying to find a beat. I'll get literally I will get overstimulated I'd be like oh my god but I have to learn sometimes like B King rest in peace to him but he was saying like he had he was a, a lyricist he said I used to really I like Eminem and J. Cole Eminem used to be my favorite but y'all weren't trying to hear my shit y'all bitches don't want to hear about uh, they don't be educated in the club they just want to drink four locos and get fucked up and that's some real shit you when you in the club if I want to make that's it that's the club photo you right bro. exactly but it's some, it's still some hard motherfuckers that spit bars that you can really, yeah, for sure. hear, you know. Mm-hmm. But it is all about, you know, how you, like life is what you make it. So, my goal is yes, I want you to hear me on the radio right now. Shout out to um, oh, I'm sorry. Shout out to FMP Radio. Excuse me. Shout out. Yes. Yeah, so shout out to them as well. But um, there's also um an Atlanta underground radio station that has been playing me too. So I definitely want more. 
mm-hmm. people. I want to hit me on WGCI. Like, what? That's me? Yeah, for That's sure. Me. So I have working on get using less way. fuck Bro. and, you know, different words. I could say fuck, but there's other words I could say that can, you know, actually be played on the radio. Yeah, and that should have make it easy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or short, you know what I'm saying? Make it easy, for sure. So I got a couple more questions. I'm going to let you get up out of here. So I want to ask you about your, your support system. You know what I'm saying? I talk to a lot of artists and they be like, my biggest fans, my biggest supporters, my biggest sharers, commenters, people that I don't need, I ain't never met before that I met one time. What What's your support system like? You feel like you got you have to support around you or or it's, it's far and wide? So for me, it's like that. Sometimes like it'll, I'll literally walk, sometimes come to shows by myself and I always leave with a fan. I always leave with a supporter or I'll come to a show and someone knew me. Mm-hmm. Or someone knows me mm-hmm. and or have heard of me or remembers me from years ago from that one show. Like to have an impact on people from just that first encounter. I definitely remember like from the that. first time I seen you it was at the trap. It was a mm-hmm. trap, bro. Literally, it'd be at Trap House. It'd be at mm-hmm. uh, Rap Cave um, or Bricks. Um, it'll be at a lot of different spots from years ago mm-hmm. where I was just a little butterfly. Rapping like this, trying to hug myself, trying to, cause I'm so nervous. You that was a butterfly know. stage. You was doing your thing, on I mean, bro. Yeah. I, was, I mean, still, but I mean, like, I guess cocoon, cat. Cause the energy, the like, energy is crazy. Yes, cause it's in my. I really do it. Like I really feel it. Like I'll just be going hard. That's just naturally me. But I'm saying, like, you wouldn't even know if you, if I actually like watch my old performances. I used to have panic attacks before I even perform, and not panic attacks like. Not you in the back throwing up like beat no, rabbit. No, not like that. So panic attacks come in different waves. Mine was more like fight or flight. Like I'll be quiet and I'm shaking like a motherfucking leaf. My heart is pounding extremely fast to the point where I can hear it in my ears, and you won't even know I'm smoking for a reason because I'm like, what the fuck. The whole time I'm just excited. I'm not nervous about none of y'all in here. I don't care. I mean, I do care about y'all, but I mean, I, none of y'all are making me nervous. Yeah, I think that's I'll like anxiety. Form, I, it's the anxiety. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. the anticipation of what you about to do because I go hard. Like I literally, I'll be winded after I perform because I'm really rapping from the heart. Mm-hmm. Like I'm really. That's why I say I'm spitting bars from the heart. You can hear it in my rhymes because that's just how I am. Like I naturally am like that and. I'm learning um, just to, like, you know, loosen up and dip it low sometimes. You could do that because I am hard body. I am gangster, yes, but I'm still a lady. I'm still a flower. Mm-hmm. But flowers can even grow through concrete. So that's why For I'm sure. learning, even as a woman, we really are flowers. Like, For sure. Sometimes that's we just want to be hard bodies. We want to be, like, in a way, a man. I didn't really think that, but in a way, it is like that. Where we like we the new y'all and then, uh, no shade to you. I'm not saying you because you can't be the new. No, but saying. I mean, when it comes down to <laughs> sometimes just even the emotions, like yeah, for sure. sometimes it's like that where we trying to prove who the toughest. Yeah, like for sure. sometimes girls don't want to sit like back then the, the housewives. The housewives can sit there all day and talk their shit right. all day. We kind of made it that way. All these single mothers and shit on bro. Your rig is crooked. Mm. You have no money. Your husband's leaving you for me. Things like that, right? Nowadays, you have. Two conversations. And they be like, okay, what's up? What you, what you trying to do? What you trying to do? What? What the? F- y'all didn't even get a chance to really get to the under like the main reason why y'all here. And it really was a misunderstanding. Probably because she looked at you wrong. Mm-hmm. Men do that too. But y'all, the difference between women and, women and men is the grudges be held longer, unfortunately, and it be over the most pettiest thing. And sometimes it be over y'all. Between men or women? Between women. Okay. Even men. Yeah. But I'm saying the grudges. Because some men, I've witnessed myself from my homies, they can beat each other up. Senseless, damn near. Yeah. Shake up afterwards. Yeah. And then their main thing would be what? He's, that's, still, that's my bro, but he's still a bitch. What? What? We can't do that. I ain't going to. If I find mm-hmm. a girl, I don't want to be your friend no more. I don't, it should never get to the point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we gotta do you only fight him. people you love, like brother, sister. If I fight you, it feel like because I, I feel like you yeah, a brother really, to me. I really do love sure. you. Yes, yeah. that's that's the real stuff. But at the same time, I hate it because even as women, if you see little girls had little siblings, younger yeah. girls fight, we weren't fighting like y'all. Yeah, they was really being petty, pulling hair yeah. and shit. What are you doing? You know? Yeah, these kids, Chris. Man, nobody nowadays, ever called my phone or my door or anything. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. But it's how it is. A lot of times, it's a big difference <clears> between <throat> us mm-hmm. and. I had to learn that, like, I know I'm hard body. It's also things that I went through that's making that makes me hard body. But I know that I am a woman. I know that I can still sit and chill. I don't have to be seen. I'm already seen without saying a thing. Mm-hmm. 
ours. But real shit. So I don't have to. Sometimes it's best to be quiet because you can watch the whole room. Mm -hmm. I can figure out how many people up in here right now because the fact that I'm not just talking. My eyes are always wandering. Mm -hmm. But also in reserve. When you're trying to be doing all of this, trying to be saying you can get somebody killed. Mm -hmm. Women sometimes are a part of why men get killed. Men are too. <laughs> I'm just saying. Besides them not shutting the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> besides not shutting the fuck up. Just shut up. That's it. I talk a lot, yes, but I do know when. When they get some when some shit finna go down, you better be quiet because who you you finna you gonna slide mm. with these niggas? No, the niggas gonna slide. That's how they supposed to. But sometimes bitches get in the crossfire because they're trying to be a nigga. Bulls ain't got no name. And sometimes niggas hit bitches too. These hands are bisexual. Okay. They shoot bitches too. I'm just saying. They don't, these, sometimes they don't even want to fight you. Girl, girl, shut up. Right, they sometimes they just heartless. Hurt. They, they, you can see it in their eyes. The soul is gone. Leave them niggas alone. Okay. Or be a lady and just sit back. Let them. Let them. Oh, they finna wrestle. Sometimes you just want to get in. I understand. If it's your brother. Still wait, because you can still jump the fuck in, because if I got a brother, I'm jumping the fuck in. But I'm not going to do the talking, mm -hmm. because it's a man. This is man talking. For sure. So, yeah. That's that's, that's definitely some wise words spoken up right there, sister. I'm sure. So, um, like I said, I got a couple more questions before I let you slide. With that being said, talk to me about your opinion on... Uh, your peers in the industry that you're a part of, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the vibes when you when you in trap? You know what I'm saying? And the other artists are getting ready and so, shit, and it's your time to perform versus their time to perform, and blase blah. You know what I'm saying? Back to what you said about support. Um, a lot of my main support is my, my big sister is one of my biggest fans. Shout out Dominique, I love you so much, and Saisha. I love y'all. Shout out. Y'all literally know my music. Y'all are one of my biggest friends. Dominique's my biggest fans for sh fan for sure. However, um, a lot of um artists, shout out Big Boss B. <laughs> but <laughs> shout out K Cap. A lot of y'all, shout out Jada Low, Jada Lot. I mean, I can shout out a lot of people. Jada Low. Um, that Milani Monet, like I can shout out a lot of people that are and these are women I'm naming. I could go to the, my homies too. That are artists that are really big supporters and sometimes i do not habitually see them these are not people that i'm with every single day because we are artists too we have our own lives we are busy sometimes we are booked and busy and blessed i'm basking on blessings every day like look look today i'm on an interview like what that's a, that's a blessing i'm on a podcast so my main supporters not only are people that i don't know when i look and see i have over 32 countries that listen to my music and five of them I never even heard of until I read them. Mm -hmm. Like, I did not know about a lot. Like, Bahrain, what is that? I didn't know where that was. Um, it was a lot of different countries that I didn't even know that, listen, even if it's yeah. those two songs out of the 20, the fact that you, how did you even find it? For sure, um, bro. You know, so to even be blessed to have people that don't even know me be fan. Like I said, I can walk into a room and have that support. Mm. But with artists, yes. For me, I like to reciprocate energy. If you support me, I'm gonna support you. I always like that. Whether it's a sharing is free. Support be free. It's not always that that twenty dollar ticket that you probably gotta, you know, pay for or something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you simply just sharing the flyer and spreading the words like somebody need to come because I can't come. Like I can't make it. But I wanna send somebody else and you know, put the word out because maybe you never know. It's probably putting money in their pocket the whole time. It's not just um you missing the show like you never know somebody need that pay the bill like that one person could have made a big impact you know but with that it it helps you learn who is going to be with you when you are at the top for sure and for sure. that's why when i talk to my i was just artists, telling my homie when bullshit happens shorty it's so that motherfuckers can weave so you can yes, weave out unless you going around when shit really to happen. Stick it then oh. because you can know a real friend before be, you can learn who's your friend and who's opportunist especially right now right now the whole world don't know my name right now i'm not a millionaire right now i'm still living day by day just like everybody else you know and with that this can teach me right now too who really gonna be there but also, when I make it, I just that's why I pray every day because I want to continue to keep the genuine people around me, keep my circle small. Yeah, I may know that celebrity and that celebrity, but that don't mean that I'm with them every day. Mm -hmm. And that's what helps me with artist friends as well. I'm not with all my artist friends every day. 
it is fun to party with them. It is fun to do sessions with them. It is fun to hear their music. It is fun to even see them live. I love when I look in the crowd and people know my music. It's amazing, I bet, when they, I know their songs and I'm in the crowd. So, for me, it's about reciprocation when it comes down to supporting other artists. Like, mm. I really do appreciate that. Z Sage, this is the main person mm. to say about Z Sage. Shout out Z Sage, I'm sure. That was God. Shout out Z Sage. Every time I've ever asked her for a favor when it came down to music, she has delivered within 24 or 48 hours. Whether it is a, f- a verse, whether it is a video for content, when she texted me, I need you one time ever. I ain't gonna fly. I was somebody. there. You I ain't know gonna fly. Twenty four hours. Ask for a favor, bro. That's a love, verse. Um, bro. That's love. That's love. And still be overthinking. Like I don't think I did a good game, girl. You you walked. Cause out of my love, you at least got forty eight, um, bro. <laughs> Seventy two. I'm not rushing. No, 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 no. I'm not. I didn't give her a time period. No, for sure. But to to for you to do it within those that span, that just shows your dedication to me as well and your lord. Like that's love. And like that's what I'm like. I always do. I know I'm learning like the difference between friends and stuff. That's a friend and that's a real supporter when it comes down to music. That's a person that when I make it, that's who I say I'm gonna see you at the top. Facts. Just like Bean, I say that all the time. I'm gonna see you at the top. That's my motto. And Quee, shout out Quee's, cause it's period. I'm a and CCBKE. I say I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep it close so she can't leave me on bro. I'm sure I'm already be there on bro. <laughs> Um, bro, yeah. What time we leaving? You remember this? You what you time at, do I? At. What time do I quit? You know what I'm saying? We outside. No, for real. Right now, I got the camera already. Oh, bro, bro. <clears throat> blessing. And that's why I say I bask in my blessings every day because if you don't know me, you're gonna know me very, very soon. Mm. And when you do, yeah, you probably not seeing nobody around me now, and that's for uh, the right reasons because I had to learn. Not everybody your friend. Right. And ain't nothing wrong with that. That's good. You got to have discernment, bro. It ain't good. We got a hundred motherfuckers around yeah, you. They ain't work shit. Ago, they ain't do shit. Literally a year ago, I probably would have had a group of people in here. But I probably would have to beg them to come, which is embarrassing. Bro. She want to come. You know, she want to come to in here. And I'll be you know, hating. I'm going to bring a million people okay, with them and don't I'm nobody good. else do nothing. I'm sure it'd be one art. Like, damn, don't nobody do no camera. Don't nobody do, don't nobody do nothing. Y'all just here. Bro, uh, but it I, taught me that nobody nobody I'm takes kidding. my crap as serious as I do, and nobody is me. That's another thing. When you look and expect yourself for somebody, you're gonna be disappointed every time. Nobody is me, and I'm learning. If you're not gonna come hard, like I'm not saying exactly like me, but if you're not gonna reciprocate the same support that I'm giving you, I can't be around. So, you. so uh, and it's okay. I still fuck people from a distance. I'm not, I'm not beefing with anybody. <clears throat> For sure. I'm about that every day. Of course. You beefing? That's the oh. only thing I'm beefing with is my fridge. I can't stay out that motherfucker. Sure. I love it. I'm I can't. I'm beefing with my I'm damn beef. self, you know bro. I'm That's sure. it. Me versus me. That's it. I'm, I'm, not, sure. I'm not competing with nobody. It's me. I have tunnel vision. That's why I, in my raps, almost every song that I have, ironically, I can always find a way to say stay focused or tunnel vision. Mm-hmm. I always have it in a bar. It never fails. It's effortless now Where it's I always got a bar like that And it's always a different bar But stay focused And tunnel vision Is somewhere in there For sure That's dope That's dope Well I definitely appreciate Your time And some of the most Valuable Thank things you. we got Before you get up out of here Let the people know What they see If they look you up What they can listen to What you would want them To listen to Where they can find you All that good shit First things first I just dropped an album On Halloween Called Love a Girl On Demon Time Uh oh so, Make sure you blare that. And I also got a feature with Big Boss Bean on there. But they ain't the only feature I got. I got another album that I dropped last year called My Diabolical Dialogues. And that's out on all streaming platforms as well. Titles go crazy. Man, lyricists, I don't play. You can find me everywhere. I-N-D-I-C-A, I-N-D-I-A. Indica, India. Remember that name. Because as soon as you hear me and you listen, you're going to be like, damn. So. Thank you. For sure. Like I said, I definitely appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Cheer. Oh, you cute? Yeah, you got uh, You know, I'll be running Cheer. through these bitches on bro. I'm sure. I got the little boy. I got to go work tomorrow, bro. I'm sure. I'll be. I'm sure. You know that.